Welcome everybody to the Lasting Hole Podcast. This is Josh in is the cave with James, or Jim, Jane, Jimmy, you want to call me. little Jimmy, <laughs> in the cave. So, on our last podcast, uh, Isaac and I talked about the Book of Ruth. Just did a quick little overview on that because that is such a good book. It's a powerful book. And today, what James decided he thought would be a good one to talk about is uh, anointed ministers. Yeah, so so I was watching the movie uh, Jesus Revolution. Jesus Revolution, yeah. And uh, as I was watching it, uh, and earlier that day I had also listened to a sermon by Tony Evans um, about the anointing and what the anointing is, all of that. And, and I'll kind of uh, obviously get into that today. But... Uh, I was I previously listened about the anointing and how as Christians we're anointed and as I'm watching this movie it's uh, it kind of hits me like there's a line that uh, one of the characters in the movie Lonnie Frisbee he says if if you will not invite my people in to your church then how will they ever actually know Jesus like if you're not going to go out there and see them and you're not going to let them into church how are they ever going to find Jesus and it kind of hit me today as anointed ones, as, uh, as ones who follow the anointed one, Jesus Christ. Um, and we're called to disciple people, to minister to people. And thinking about kind of, you know, back in the day, the 70s, the hippies, kind of, you know, how they were viewed, especially by, you know, uh, Christians and people of like, you know, of that time. It kind of made me think about a, a very rough topic that will definitely be involved in today is the LGBTQ plus community. And, you know, God kind of put it on my heart. Hey, I want you to talk about this. And it's going to be a heavy topic because, you know, you don't necessarily ever want to ruffle feathers. And we hope that we don't. But it's kind of I just felt like the Holy Spirit was just like, hey, now's the time. I know that it's been on Josh, Josh's heart for a little while to talk about it and identity and stuff like that and so hopefully today at the very least we'll get you at guys you know asking questions by the end of it you know the ultimate question okay how do i minister to these people because they're they're there and we don't want to necessarily just shun them you know we don't we don't want to just be like go and do your own thing but uh we, we want to be able to get them to to know who christ really is yeah, and and you know, and so we'll get into that today. But that's kind of hopefully what we'll express and explain well to you guys today, and get you guys asking the right questions. Yeah, and there's been great success worldwide with preaching the gospel versus, hey, I worship Jesus, and yeah. then just leaving it at that. You know, yeah, when you when you lay it out and you know tell them why. They can see that, and they want more of that. Because yep. you can say, well, I worship anything. It doesn't. You could, anybody could come up to me and say, well, I worship the stars. I worship the moon. I don't care. Tell me why. I probably still won't change my mind. Right, yeah. But you know, why do you but right? why, What's the reasoning? You know, and it, what convinced you to do it? And uh, it's just, it's good apologetics. Yeah. It's good education, because the more you learn about the other sides, the the easier it is to combat yeah. it health, in a healthy way, so you're not just yelling at each other about blah, blah, you know. Yeah, and that's, that's we don't we don't want to yell. No, right? like Paul never yelled. At anybody. No, he he talked. He was them. stern. He was stern. <laughs> he was, he stern, was sarcastic, but... very sarcastic in a lot of his letters. But he was not afraid to ruffle feathers, and he didn't try to. Right, it wasn't his goal to go out there and make people be upset and. and you know, hurt people's feelings and, you know, be jerks to them. He, his purpose was to express and show the gospel and why he follows Jesus. In two words, tactfully and respectfully. Tactfully. Yep. And he was brilliant at it. So, all righty. You ready to get into this? I am good to go. I got my cup of black Folgers coffee awesome. and I am ready to rock and roll. I got my smart water, so. Yeah, hopefully it helps. Hopefully it does. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, as I said earlier, this a, a lot of this and this first 
kind of section hopefully will be uh, will explain a lot about what anointing is. Um, it's a it's a word that goes throughout the Bible. It is brought up multiple times in the Old Testament, multiple times in the New Testament, although in a little bit of a different way in the New Testament. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, so the anointing uh, derives from the very beginning in Genesis. It talks about how uh, when God created man, he filled him with his with the breath of life, with the spirit of God, right? He, he filled him, uh, man, with that. So Adam and then eventually Eve as well. Um, but they were the first anointed ones. God anointed them as... <clears throat> Uh, as bridges, um, as, you know, kind of this uh, representative of heaven on, um, he was, Adam was meant to be a representative of heaven on earth. That was Adam's purpose. And of course, Adam sinned, fell short, so did Eve. And so God cast them out, but he had a plan in mind, and we'll get to that plan eventually. Um, but it kind of follows this identity of being anointed and God knew that even though uh, we cannot um, do this on our own we cannot be saved on our own God knew that he would have to bring anointed people in in order um, and anointed places in as well uh, in order to uh, bring heaven bring his spirit bring himself to earth in order for people to to gain closer to him to to find what they had lost because they had left uh, the garden because they were no longer, you know, um, the representatives because they are now filled with sin. And so that's kind of where we left off. That was the first anointing. Um, so when you read through scripture, and I forgot to, uh, to, to read exactly what the anointing oil is made out of, but you have this anointing oil that uh, they created, I believe, in Exodus. And um, it was it was a specific... Um, ingredients that God had gave, uh, I think it, I think it was uh, Moses, and he gave Moses and Aaron these specific ingredients, and he told them make this oil, and and when you anoint people with this oil, it, it will be as if my spirit is, what was it? Uh, it is made of myrrh, cinnamon, calamus, cassia, and olive oil. Okay. All right. So those are the specific ingredients in he, Exodus 30. Yeah. Yeah. In Exodus 30. So he, in Exodus 30, he gives them these specific ingredients and he says, when you make this oil and you anoint someone or a place, something with this, you are, you are, uh, you are anointing it and making it, uh, holy. Um, and so because of that, we see places like the tabernacle when Israel, when Moses, when they build the tabernacle for the first time, the very first thing they do after building it is they anoint it. They want to make it a place that is holy unto God, that it is a it is a bridge to heaven. It is a bridge to God. The next kind of place we see this um, pop up is uh, Genesis 28. So in Genesis 28, 12, and I'll read it. It says, Jacob left Beersheba and went to and went toward Haran and he came to a certain place and stayed there at night because the sun had set taking one of the stones that of that place he put it under his head to lay down and go to sleep and he dreamed and behold there was a ladder set up on earth at the top of it and it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascended and descended on it behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord the God of Abraham and your father the God of Isaac the land under which you lie I will give to you and take your offspring your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed behold I am with you and will keep you wherever you go I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. 
So early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set up for a pillar and poured oil at the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. Then God, then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I, I go and I will give him and I will, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. But this stone, which I have set up as a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. And so he pours oil on it. Now, again, Jacob comes before Moses does. But there is this sense of I'm pouring oil on it. And I'm anointing it. I'm making this a holy place of God. He changed the name of it. The town was Luz. And he changed the name to Bethel which means house of God. And so he is anointing this place and he is saying that it is a house of God. It, it's, it's this bridge between God and, or heaven and earth. And so the next part, obviously I talked about Israel, how they anoint the tabernacle. Um, another thing that Israel would do is that they would they would anoint their priests and their kings with this oil. Um, and the reasoning for them anointing their priests and their kings with this oil is because they wanted to set them apart. They, they were basically saying these people need God the most because they're leading us. And we need them to be a bridge between that's why, like, when you look at the high priest, the high priest was the only one allowed to go into the Holy of Holies to actually, you know, see God, be with God, and talk to God. Um, and it was because they were supposed to be this bridge, and they were anointed, and they got anointed every time before they went in, because they needed to be this bridge to the rest of Israel from God, from heaven. And so we see this. But where does this go? Like, do we just have to keep anointing with oil as, you know, we're trying to you know, worship God, know God, all these things? Well, no, because eventually God's ultimate plan came into place and Jesus Christ was born and he would be uh, not, not anointed with oil, but he would be baptized in uh, water and in spirit. And so when he got baptized, um, his cousin actually baptized him. And so he gets baptized and, you know, um, and when he gets baptized, the spirit of the Lord in the shape of a dove came down and rested upon him. So he was filled with the spirit at that moment. And what's awesome about this is, is Jesus then became this, not just a bridge, like he's no longer a bridge. He is now the physical manifestation of God on earth. He is heaven. He's God. And he is bringing it all to us. And he's able to, and that's when he starts, you know, doing miracles and casting out demons. And, and, and he is trying to bring uh, anointedness um, and, and kind of gift people with the blessing of being anointed that he's been given. But it really comes to fruition is when he dies and then he's risen again. And at that moment, he then because he has died rose again he's paid for the debt of all sin now he can actually gift us with the anointing he we can now actually be anointed without having to you know do the the rituals and anoint ourselves with oil all the time and because of that he's kind of gifted us with the ability to go and do what he did i mean he told his disciples you will do even greater things than i and, and because he has called us to that. So ultimately, this is where the idea of Christ means the anointed one. So Christ, Jesus Christ is the anointed one. And then that's where we get the word Christian. Christian means follower of Christ, anointed, following the anointed one. So where does that come up again? Well, if we go to, um, if we go to 1 Corinthians 2, this is where I think um, Paul talks a little bit more. And he doesn't necessarily label it anointed. Um, but there's a sense of when you are anointed, you you gain um, 
the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, like the Holy Spirit's now in your life and you can hear the Holy Spirit because you've followed Christ. You've, you've counted that cost as we've talked about in previous ones. And, um, and as you talk, and as you count that cost and decide, I am going to follow Christ. That is when Christ anoints you. And he says, you are now my disciple and I am now calling you to go and minister and make more disciples. Um, because God, God's ultimate goal is to bring as many people to heaven, as many people to him. He wants people to know him. I and mean, we are not just, we are meant to be not just bridges, but representatives of heaven, of what God is to this earth. <clears throat> and so we read in 2 Corinthians 6 through 16, it says, Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers. In other words, it's not coming from like, it's not this earthly wisdom, right? It's not, you know, well, I know, you know, my car likes to break down this. So always have spare parts for this specific model because it likes to break down in this way. And so if you have parts, it's a lot quicker than having to, you know, ruin your life now because your car broke down. Um, it's not wisdom like that. It's heavenly wisdom. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord our God. And so basically what Paul's saying here is if the kings, if the priests in Jesus' time understood what being anointed really meant and that Jesus was anointed, they wouldn't have gone and killed him because they would have realized who he really is. But they didn't, and in a way it's for the better that they didn't. Um, but Paul continues and he says, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. This is where counting the cost comes in. When you accept Jesus in, into your heart, when you decide and you've counted that cost and you've said, okay, I'm going to follow Jesus. That's the moment when 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 you decide I love Jesus and I want to follow him that's when you're anointed right and obviously you know I, I still recommend it I can be a completely different podcast about being baptized and you know being anointed when you know you're that, saying that's, Paul a talks about another, that's a whole another that's a whole another yeah but this idea of like when you say I'm accepting Jesus I want to live like Christ I want to know Christ obviously there's grace you're not going to be perfect none of us are like we're not going to be perfect but what's amazing is that the holy spirit comes down and it helps guide us because as as again like i was listening to tony evans the way he words this i love this he goes it needs to be turned on and turned up the spirit in your life and when you become a new christian the biggest thing is saturate yourself in the word you know listen to listen to sermons listen to and then study it yourself pray a lot, worship a lot, you know, put a lot of your time into God because you need to turn up that in order to hear the spirit's wisdom, in order to hear um, his voice and where he may be guiding you. And if you don't do that, then it's, it's, it's as if you're basically saying, I'm going to rely on myself. I'm turning down God. I don't need to listen to God. Which sounds ridiculous. You're, at when that you're, point, you're listening to man. Yeah. You're taking his word for it, which... Yeah, it just... We know that's going to fail. Man, man is stupid. We, we do so many dumb stuff. And it like we can, we can make decisions all we want. But if we're not listening to the Holy Spirit... Right? Because like, churches can turn into just like a business. Yeah. Right? Where yeah. they just kind of are going through the motions and you know it's just you come in you listen to the guy every sunday and stuff like that but if the church itself does not have its 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 nozzle of god turned up and they're not actively going where am i missing god because you may not be missing god but that question of where am i missing god where is he at where is he at and you constantly asking yourself that and searching for god is when the holy spirit will talk to you and he'll move through you but if you're not asking those questions, if you're not act actively seeking God and seeking to hear him, then it's just not going to turn out the way that you're hoping. Yeah. Let's take a break real quick. We'll be right back.
I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about the community Bible craze. It's something we're doing here through the Lasting Hope podcast. It's pretty easy to get involved. Just go to your local Walmart or Hobby Lobby or even on Amazon and purchase a new Bible or a daily devotional. We'll take really any Christian literature that you can get your hands on. And you can either get a hold of us here and uh, have it directly shipped here or somehow we'll get to it and we'll get it. But really what we want to do with that is it's our heart to make uh, the Word of God accessible to all people, whether um, it's the less fortunate, young adults, teens. We just want to get this stuff out into circulation so people have easier access to it. And then uh, we also want to build some salvation packets that we can give out to new believers and people who are just coming to Christ. I have a book here called Top 10 Things for New Christians to Understand. It's by uh, somebody I know, a guy that I really, really revere and look up to. His name is Kerry Waldy. So we just want to be able to uh, give these gifts out to people free of charge to them. Uh, we're, we're taking donations on uh, new Bibles, daily devotionals, new Christian literature, uh, I mean, really anything Christian literature-wise. And we'll even take movies. If you guys have some of your favorite Christian movies that you'd like to get it out into circulation, pick them up, get them to us, and we'll get them out into circulation. So with that being said, we appreciate all the donations we have received so far, and we also appreciate the donations to come. Uh, we've gotten on board with a couple of homeless shelters. I'd like to get in with some food banks so we can get this stuff out to the people that really need it the most, that need to hear the message of Jesus Christ. So thank you very much for your donations and all your consideration, and uh, back to the show. Welcome back to the Lasting Hope podcast. Um, we're just talking about anointed ministers. Yes, sir. So we're going to get back into that. Take her away, Jimmy. Alrighty, so uh, where we left off, we left off in verse 9 where it said, But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor heart of man imagine, what God has prepared for those who love him. And we were talking about how as anointed, as anointed, um, as anointed ones, as those who are Christians who have uh, chosen to follow Jesus and love Jesus and choose him, uh, we kind of realize that God, like God wants to anoint us, He does. But we have to, we have to accept Him and accept, you know, like we talked about account, counting the costs and stuff. Um, but when you're anointed, you you get something that you don't get without being anointed, and that's the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Like I, I believe that the Holy Spirit can lead people and will lead people to the point to where they accept Jesus. And where they count that cost and, and, and choose to follow him. But until you choose to follow him, you're not going to have, as I referenced earlier, Tony Evans saying, you won't have your dial turned up and you won't have it turned on even if you are not, if you have not chosen to follow Christ, because you're not actually going to listen to him. But you're not going to get the wisdom that the Holy Spirit has, because man does not have this wisdom. So as we continue uh, in verse 10. Through 16 it says these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit for the Spirit searches everything even the depths of God for who knows a per a, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the Spirit who is from God that we might understand things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who is understood the mind of the Lord, so as to instruct him, to instruct the Lord. But we have the mind of Christ. And so Paul ends chapter 2 
with basically saying that if you're not anointed, if you're not a follower of Christ, one, you haven't been anointed, and two, you're not going to gain the spiritual wisdom that the Lord wants to impart on you. The Lord is calling us who are, the one, the Lord is calling us to be anointed, to be followers of Christ, to accept Jesus in his heart. But for those who have already made that decision, who have already counted that cost and decided, hey, I want to follow Christ. I, I, I want to um, to live my life like him, to, to be like him and, and live my life according to him. You have to turn that dial up. You have to listen to the spirit and be searching for the spirit to respond constantly. And if you're not, you're going to kind of fall back into the ways of man who are not anointed and who live by their own wisdom, their own knowledge, their own understanding. And we don't want that. And so that's kind of what leads me into this whole next section of being ministers, anointed ministers, is, okay, if we have been anointed, if we have accepted Christ, and it, if we are now making the decision we want to be anointed people of God, the next step isn't just, okay, now I'm anointed, now you know the, the Holy Spirit can just help me live my life better and be a better person. God doesn't stop there. God continues by saying, okay, now your job is to go and make disciples of all nations. When the disciples were anointed by Christ, when, when he gave them the, the great commission and he said, I want you to go to Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth, and I want you to make disciples in the, uh, of all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, baptizing them. What Jesus is saying is, I want you to go make more anointed ones. So as an anointed one, we are not simply called to just simply be anointed and, and you know get the gift of hearing the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that he has. We are called to now go and minister to those who are, as Paul says in here, are of an earthly mind, of who, those who are not anointed. That's kind of what leads me and in us into this next section of ministering is because, as I said earlier, you know, I was watching uh, Jesus Revolution, and it was talking about the hippies and all that. And in that, in the line in the movie where he says, where Lonnie Frisbee tells uh, Pastor Chuck, if you are not going out to meet my people, who are the hippies, that's what that three label your people, if you're not going out to meet my people, and you're not letting my people in, how are they ever going to know Christ? And my first thought was, that's that's the LGBTQ plus community. They're like you hear it, right? They're, yeah, they're they're people. That right that section of the movie really hit me because I watched when I I'll say when I returned home after my journey of living with the world. Yeah, I just binged watched pure flicks right movies. like <laughs> some good some bad movies yeah, like acting was bad acting was great i think that is that movie i think is like the best of both worlds there's yeah. a, i mean there's some cheesiness to there's it there's some but... cheesiness to it but you look at you know i can only imagine great movie great, movie. Oh, great acting movie. the blind the bl i, I keep saying the blind one. because i love the robertsons yeah um that's a great movie they're all great movies, yeah. but when I watched Jesus Revolution, you know, just, I had never thought of, I'm an old man living in the body, I like old music, I like old cars, I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm just an older person, I like history, so when I got to go back in time, and that movie really puts you in that mindset. It does. And it puts you back in time, and like, okay, this was the hippie hippie movement the yeah, hippie time the hippie you know lonnie the... frisbee says we thought acid was going to save the, the world, world. <laughs> like i laugh about that because it's funny it's the way funny, it, but it's it happens, true but it's true and it puts me back in that time and then i have a time of reflection i'm <sighs> like okay how is this applicable today and that's coming full circle yeah. like you just like you just said and we'll we'll continue on that but it's just such a powerful moving it is section of that movie because it it really made it made me confront myself with that question of just me as a person as a is part of the church if my 
and I'm very backwoods, redneck based country, yeah. except for country music. I don't like that. But I'm very that way of my way or the highway. Yeah. You know? So it, it's like. I know how to live the right way. I know yeah. how to live the right way. Yeah. And I was just so stubborn and set in that way. And it really hit me like, okay, me being part of the church. Yeah. Are my doors closed? Yeah. And well, I, and well, I the, found out that they were. Yeah. It, there was just that conviction of. And it hurts a little it bit. It does. When you do realize it, that. It hurts. Like, you don't necessarily feel. Because again, like the Holy Spirit's not going to like guilt trip you it's not going to like you make you feel like you're the worst person in the world it's going to conflict you yeah. right it's going to it's going to point out things that you need to work on and that it wants you to um to to be better at or to to seek the lord on and i think the line that hit me because you talked about like the we thought acid was going to save the world and you kind of chuckle and laugh at it the line that hit me the most was when lonnie frisbee looks at pastor chuck and he just says my people are looking for God and they don't know where to look. Yeah. So and because of war, war has like war. And like when, when um, America went into the Vietnam yeah. war conflict. Yeah. I we're, did it, yeah, yeah. So at that point in time, we were um, in the setting of Vietnam. Yeah. Watergate. Watergate. Ted yeah. Bundy. Oh gosh! Violence, yeah. you know, violence. Yeah, so Mansons. I mean, that was yeah. that that period so of time were, where ra racial uh, bigotry and was segregation height, yeah. was. I believe that was after integration, but it's yeah. still that. Just because the nation said we're going to integrate doesn't mean the people said Wanna we're integrate. going to yeah. integrate. And so, so that was, was that. such a high. And so that's kind tension. of what led people into this whole hippie movement of love. Like, yeah. like you, like, I, I don't know if you do, but I've, I've, I've had my fair share of like, just want love brother. Like, yeah. like making jokes about the, the whole hippie thing. But this movie really put it in perspective of how the hippies just saw the world as this dark, dark place. I think like, like multiple people said, like as Chuck's, as, as pastor Chuck was watching the TV in the movie, like he just says, the world's ending. Yep. Like, this is it. And how much more do we say that now? We say that all the time now. Like, oh, this is it. God must be coming soon. We don't know when God's coming, but we do know what God's called us to, and that's to minister. And so when I look at, like, how, like, how transformed Pastor Chuck was into understanding that, like, I need to invite these people it, in and bring them in. And I'll, I'll say this, too, based on that story, which is a true story. Yeah. You know, you look at he didn't take some progressive youth pastor who kind of connected and understood the hippie movement so he was already open to the option and because there wouldn't be such a transformation right, no, he was... took an old school and i'll say this bible thumper old yeah, school, old school pastor. rich this is you know how doctrine you... Yep. pastor and turned his entire world upside down for the better changed his life and then cha went and changed the life of thousands well because like at the end of the movie his daughter pastor Chuck's daughter comes to him who was like who had brought lonnie frisbee to him and he which she just looks at him and which goes, boggles my mind that you just pick people up on the highway back in those right, days you yeah know? Right. she's like oh you have to meet my dad yeah <laughs> who does that but um, the, the faith of in the dedication yeah. of that character for the first words that come out of his mouth yeah. were Jesus. Yeah. Like, I just got picked up on the side of the highway. This person might not like this. They might tell me to get out of the car. Right, to have that know? faith. And yeah. he, had, he had the faith to still be faithful and yeah. stand on that truth, yeah. even though he f knew fully well that it would mean, well, I guess I'm going to keep walking. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of the thing is like, one, there was a lot of faith from Lonnie to be able to just get into a car and say, like, because she asked him, she's like, where are you going? And he's just like, I'm about I'm about to go and meet some of my people and teach them about the way. Do you know the way? And she's just like, because she's kind of like ready to just leave Christ, leave Christianity and just is done, kind of done with it. She's like, oh, you have to meet my dad because her dad at the time was just like, if you could bring one of the hippies in and have them explain the whole thing. Maybe I'll under, understand it. And what was 
powerful about it is at the end of the movie when she's talking with her dad she she looks at pastor chuck who's this old guy and she just goes i'm really proud of you because you were willing to do something that didn't make sense that wasn't normal for you and could backfire in so many ways and you were willing to say but if this is where the spirit's moving i'm gonna go yeah and so i think because you look at his reputation yeah and throughout the movie it puts high emphasis on his reputation and we'll put in quotes being shattered yeah because he has his congregation he has his congregation congregation, half of them are leaving but the other half he's he's ministering and they're open to the new influx of and i'll say it this way of a new roster of a new generation and and that's that's actually a podcast that i have planned that i'm working on right now with somebody else is ushering in that next generation yeah and you know how we connect with gen z and now gen alpha yeah and their ways are going to be different than our Our ways because technically i'm gen z same we're right at the beginning of the gen z yeah I had don't know anything about the end of Gen Z. Yeah. So even within that generation, there's so many different changes. And with Chuck, Pastor Chuck, being yeah. so much older, you know, there's a, such a span of generation. I mean, this guy probably saw World War II. This guy yeah. seen Korea. This guy's now seen Vietnam. And, seen uh, and he understands that. the concept of Vietnam. Yeah. Whereas the hippies are just peace, love, no more war. Right. Which, whether you agree with the premise of Vietnam War or not, that's not the that's not point. The, yeah, the it's, point. It's, but it's just that peacetime, we're sick of war, and then you look at all the other aspects, like we said, Watergate, um, racial tensions was so high, yeah. crime was up. I mean, you had Manson, you had Bundy, yeah. you had you know the beginning of John Gacy, yeah. you had the son of Sam. Literally every big city is just getting shot just, up. It was. And I think what really... Such a dark time. It was a very dark time. And I think the thing that like they talk about in the movie is how like the big thing for the hippies how, how, in the movie, how they describe it, is basically that they're searching for the truth, whatever the truth is, right? Yep. There's this sense of, I want to find truth. I want to find what's real. And so for them... Like, like the daughter asked, like, where's the love? Where's the love of God? And that's a valid question to ask because it's not just like that, you know, God is going to be stern all the time. He is loving and he, and he wants to accept you, but you have to accept him, right? He'll accept, yep. He accepts you for who you are, but you have to accept him if he is going to anoint you and make you one of his anointed ones. <clears throat> and, and that kind of like this idea of, of looking towards what our generation, our world is like now. When I think about like the LGBTQ plus community, I think about people who want to find truth. Yep. They want to find what's real. Like, like, like if, if they're if, the modern day hippies. Yeah. Like if I'm, if I'm not a boy, maybe I'm a girl. If I'm not either, maybe I'm neither. Maybe. Right. Like, like, yep. There's the sense of they just want to find truth. They want to find love. They want to feel accepted for who they are. And more than anything, us as Christians, us anointed ministers of God, should be bringing them in and showing them the love of God and saying, like, I don't care what you're struggling with. I don't care who you're trying to figure out who you are or what you're becoming. I accept who you are. And God loves you just the same. That doesn't mean that we, we we can't change. God still wants us to change, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't accept us. And I think when, you know, because, like, I, I have family who struggles in that area. Watching them struggle because they, well, you know, maybe, like, I'm not getting, you know, a girl because I'm, so maybe I'm gay because a, a girl won't go out with me right the sense of just like 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 you you've you've referenced uh dave Barringer's book like the sense of like depression and like there is so much like spiritual attacks going on in our world and our world is just oblivious to it 
because we want we want to find truth and I think sometimes the hard part is we don't necessarily want to find out how harsh the truth can be and I think and I think that's a little sad because as Christians <clears throat> As Christians, we are supposed to be the loving hands and representatives of God. And I'm not saying that no one's doing that, right? That's a broad expression. And I'm not going to say everyone's doing it either because that's, you know, it's you can't say everything. You can't say always and you can't say never, right? Because there's people who do go out and minister well to the LGBTQ plus community or any other community that might and be, we commend right? another religion for that and we commend you for that because, because that is a tough tough task it is um especially like you know other religions too you know going out and ministering you know we you look at uh, missionaries who go out to other countries and they minister to people who do not believe as them and live with them like they live life with them and i think that's the big thing is when when you don't feel accepted i've had moments of in friend groups where I don't feel accepted by the friends and then I don't want to hang out with the friends. They could be the nicest people on the planet and if I don't feel accepted by them, I don't necessarily want to hang out with them, right? And, and yeah, from personal experience, I mean, there's two guys in this room right now, which is me and James. When I met James, when I met you, yeah. it was at Isaac's wedding yeah. and then Elijah's wedding was, we actually like talked. Talked, yeah. And because we were in the wedding. Yeah. And so you get Isaac, Elijah, James, and then Brock and Josh. Josh and, so yeah. Elijah's whole wedding party, with the exception of me and Abby's little brother, Brady, you guys are this Bible college group of yeah. friends. All went to Bible college together, grew up together for four years. And I did not. So I'm kind of looking in from the outside Side, yeah. of that. And I was very intimidated I'm intimidated by men in general, just because I think that's a man yeah. thing, and women are intimidated by other women too. I just think that's yeah. a pers a it's, personal thing. Yeah, you get intimidated thing. by what you. And, yeah. and when I met this group of guys, we're all sitting in a room <laughs> for hours. Yeah, and I started talking to you know all you guys, and I'm like, these guys are just normal dudes. Like I consider you one of my best friends, you know, because. Yeah. I mean, we spend so much time do, together. Yeah. And, you know, even when we went down to Yoko, met Brock's brother. Yeah. And I sit and I talked. We had lunch together, me, him, nice, and yeah. Josh, you know, and Abby and their ladies. We all had lunch and I just talked to them. And I'm, now all of a sudden, I, you know, I don't have that. They're Bible students. They know so much more about this than me. Oh, no. How am I going to have, you know, like, because yeah. in my head, I'm like, how am I going to? be able to have these conversations with them because I feel like they're going to know more than me. They're going to talk over me and oh, no. correct. You know, it's just that that yeah. fear that we create in our own minds. And I can sit, I, I mean, when you and I do podcasts, you know, like right now it's Saturday at 11.59. Yeah. We started this process this morning at like nine, nine, nine when we yeah, started so yeah, talking yeah. and living. Like, it's like we're just like talking that, yeah. about life, you know, and but we do a, a lot of encouraging yeah. to each other. And it's just all your fears just kind of are blown away when you actually sit down, yeah. talk to people. You don't feel so alone when you're talking to someone who you trust. And you learn, and I'll take just into any sort of relationship, when you look at someone and you pass judgment on them. And then you later learn, maybe, you know, maybe the kid at school is mean because you don't know that his parents abuse him. Right, you don't yeah. know that he's raised in the super toxic environment. And now you take sympathy on it, but it's almost too late. Yeah. You know, you've already... You kind of burned that bridge. You've already burned that bridge. There's a line from um, uh, the movie Hacksaw Ridge. Have you seen it? Love it's a great movie. movie. Great movie. It's a good. It's a good man movie. It's a good. Yeah, it is, and it's it's realistic to what war looked like. I like it. Right. Um, there's a line in that movie where one of the characters who was kind of the the infantry bully, I guess, to to um, this guy's group, and they're sitting in there as they're you know just 
eating and they're talking finally they're getting a chance to just one-on-one -on -one actually sit down and this guy looks at um what's the guy's name again do you remember his name uh, it was Doss. It was uh, Dawson, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Doss. It was Doss. his last name was Doss. Yeah. Uh, anyways, he looks at Doss and he just goes, he goes, I grew up in the orphanage, and he goes, he goes, you learned how to, he goes, you learned how to fight, you learned how to judge people quicker. Yeah. And he goes, I got you very wrong. And what was interesting is that, like, because of Doss's heart, he was instantly forgiven. He was like, they were good friends now right and i think as christians when we talk to people with a different viewpoint a different religion like we talk all the time about like oh man gone are the days when you can say something that you both disagreed on and you could still be friends about and stuff like that mm -hmm. well it's only gone if we allow it to be gone yeah if we if we say well it's gone so never mind then it's going to be gone but if we continue, right, if we go, Jesus didn't just stop and be like, oh, well, you know what? This person is never going to accept me, so I'm going to walk away now and just not give them another chance. No. And so as Christians, as, again, we've been anointed by God to go out and minister to people and spread the anointedness of God. And if we, and if we are willing to continue going there and there and there, be, like, I know this is going to sound harsh, be okay with being offensive yeah. and, and, and stand firm in what you believe. Don't let what other people think to a certain extent matter as much, right? Like we want to, we want to bring people in and the only way we're going to do that is by showing them that we care so much that we do not care about how they respond to us. Paul kept going. Paul was stoned and then throw, thrown off a building. And then he walked right back in and kept ministering. Like, Paul didn't give up. And so as Christians, how much so do we just look at, especially like the LGBTQ plus community, and just think that they're like a lost hope when they're not? They're lost people. They need Jesus. But we can't just give up on them. And when we have an experience with one person and we express what we believe, and if they get upset or they cuss you out or you know, they berate you for how terrible of a person you are. How much more do we need to walk away, pray to our God and say, God, give me another opportunity to be with that person. Give me another opportunity to go and actually share the gospel with that person and be, not just share, be the gospel, be the anointed one to this person. Because eventually, yes, they might not. There might be that risk of them not ever accepting Christ. But you'll never know if you never actually go out there and 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 risk getting berated, risk getting cussed out, risk I'm not gonna say it happens, but like risk getting beaten. Like I don't you don't know what's gonna happen, but you also don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. And God could move, but unless you're unless you are turning up your dial, unless it's on and you're turning it up, the Holy Spirit's never going to move. The Holy Spirit's not just gonna go and do something. He's called you to move. He's asked you to move. And as Christians, me and Josh, if we don't listen, if we don't turn off our dial, if we don't hear the Holy Spirit speaking, and we're not searching to hear the Holy Spirit speaking, the Holy Spirit's not going to use us. And we're going to get to heaven. And maybe we will get into heaven. But how much more do we want to get to heaven and not only hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant, but to look over and see the person that we thought was hopeless to get into heaven, get into heaven. How much more of a reward is that yeah. knowing like, man, God, God is so awesome that he brought someone that I thought was hopeless, that I knew was lost. I knew was confused. I knew was just searching for truth and didn't want to listen to me. But because I was faithful to hearing the Holy Spirit and continually going back and fighting, like you talk about like, like a lot of like what counselors will tell married couples is to fight for the relationship, not just instantly give up on it. Like, you got to fight for it, right? Yep. It's not just going to be easy. <clears throat> How much more do we have to actually fight for people to get into heaven and fight for people to know who Christ is, to be that representative, to be heaven, to be God on earth? How much more? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that is a, wow. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I, went of, out of, I, I went out of my own soapbox. I'm but, sorry. <laughs> you know, 
and I and I will take that in a little bit different direction here. And at this point, we're through our notes, so we're just we're just this is just talking. We're just this is just talk. We're we're rolling now. Um, you know, and this just popped into my head too. I'm going to go back to Luke chapter four, and I'm going to paraphrase this. Um, so it's when Jesus heals the paralytic through the roof. Yeah. So you know when the guys when the buddies that are carrying this guy for probably miles, it's hot, yeah. and I'm sure this dude ain't light. Yeah. They're carrying him. They got sandals on, they so their get, feet might be getting burned by the sand. Too. They cannot get through the crowd. Right. They could have just said, oh, can't get through the crowd, let's go. But they didn't. They, yeah. they found a way, and they carried him up the stairs after walking through yep. miles in heat probably. Yeah carried him up the stairs and lowered him through the roof probably exhausted probably hungry probably, probably could use a drink of water probably. they got him through the roof to get to jesus it was the dedication to get their friend make friend i mean it's some, their friend somebody's brother getting <gasps> him through to jesus so he could be healed and so he could be touched yeah. by jesus so when we look at take that into consideration it's are we just going to give up on this community we need to be like that we need to be the people who are carrying that are pushing you know pushing the the envelope of the crowd you know in and i'll make this comparison the crowd the community is too heavy yeah we can't get through that find a way yeah, find a different way. You know, and Stephen, well, Stephen Furtick, he did a preaching on that, and it, and it was just look up. Don't look ahead, look God. up. Yeah. Because when you look up to well, the heavens. Like, like the, the friends bring to Jesus. Why are they bringing this guy to Jesus? Because they know he's the, he's the only hope this guy has to yeah. ever walk. Again, if he ever, did he, he might not have been walking since, I can't remember if he, I, um, I can't remember, but either way, like, he, these friends did not give up and they knew Jesus is the answer. We are anointed ministers of God. We know that Jesus is the answer. So as anointed ministers, why are we not constantly bringing people to back to the person, to the anointed one, to the one that we know is the only hope for any human being, us included, for anything? And I think that's kind of that question that we want to, to kind of place with you guys as we start to, I guess, wrap this up, yeah. is to, like we we want you guys to start thinking. One, am I turning my dial up? Am I am I looking for Christ? Am I looking for the Holy Spirit? Where is He moving? Where is He talking? Right, diving deep into your Bibles, doing good Bible studies. And the second thing we want you guys to be asking, and, and we are, you know, this is kind of a, a self revelation to ourselves as well, right? Like, where are we ourselves also? When are when are we continuing to look up and 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 find new ways to bring people to the anointed one, the, the to Jesus Christ, who is the only hope of us and them? My personal revelation through this podcast was, okay, I'm sitting here, I'm I'm waiting for an opportunity to speak to somebody somewhere. Yeah. The Lord said, make an opportunity. Yeah. So here we are. With a podcast. With a podcast. With a podcast. So that was a big thing for me as I'm sitting here waiting for somebody to come up to me and just, you know, Josh, I'm just I just need some prayer right now. Let me pray over you. That that was what I was waiting for. I'm like, yeah. okay, God, you give me somebody in the flesh. Yeah. Come to me. And that's how we expect that's right. We, we our kind expectation. of have these ex expectations you know, of how God and the Holy Spirit are going to and, respond and, to our situation. And I'll call back to the cost when you were telling us about your experience with the lady at the drive-thru. Yeah. You know, um, that was just an opportunity that the Lord gave you yeah. to minister to someone. Okay. And, I, and I was just always searching for an opportunity. And then the Lord made it evident to me, you can make your own opportunity yeah. to make this happen right and here we are making making this happen like we have to be reliant on god but i think oh of course god yeah. gave us a brain for a reason he gave, like he, he gave us the ability to think through how can we strategically get involved how can we strategically 
I use the word attack. It's aggressive. Yeah. But attack the 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 problem and the issue of people not knowing Jesus, of people not knowing who He is and not accepting Him. Like, and if we're not trying to find new ways and praying about new ways, like, like you'll you'll hear people say, like, man, I'm just praying for revival. And like we talked about this earlier, yeah. like our kind of issues with revival. And I'm not saying that if the Holy Spirit wants to use revival, use revival. But in my mind, I'm going, why do we have to wait for a revival? Why does it have to be this mass, like, exodus of people leaving, like, their earthly ways into, you know, becoming Christians? Why can't we just go out and just start ministering? Mm -hmm. Like, why, why, why does it have to be this big, elaborate show, I guess, of the Holy Spirit moving? And I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit doesn't move that way. What I'm saying is, is why can't we just go out and do yeah. Right? Like like when you when you read through scripture and you read about okay, Paul went here and Peter went here and ministered here and stuff like that. Like they had groups of people there. <clears throat> there was no stinking revival. Yeah. Right? But there was people responding to the call that Paul and Peter and John and all the disciples and all the apostles were placing on people and people responded to as they called for people to follow Christ. And so we don't necessarily need this big revival we need anointed people anoint, uh, the christians to go out and do what god has called them to do which is not just be anointed but to make anointed ones we need to do the legwork daily yeah you know keep preventative maintenance i guess we'll say before catastrophe yeah you know because if we're if we're not spreading the gospel and bringing people to christ all the time yeah then there's going to be the big the big revival and yeah. one thing that we had talked about with revival is we were talking about jesus revolution still we'll go back to this um everybody's coming in everybody's you know and then lonnie frisbee leaves right yeah now what yeah what's the next step now to? now you've lost your leader and are are these people equipped to go out and now to, to do the same thing. To go out and do the same thing. Yeah. Or are they just going to not understand, get frustrated, and forget about it? Right, yeah. You know, that was that was the premise well, like, that we were well, speaking like, of. Greg in that movie was ready to give up on it because he had lost so much. People had left him so many times that he's like, well, now Lonnie's leaving, so I guess it's true. Everybody just leaves at a certain point. Yeah. And what he ended up realizing through, like, Pastor Chuck and... Um, at the time, his girlfriend, right? Like, what he ended up realizing is that people are human. People are going to make mistakes. We're going to sin. We're going to, you know, do stupid stuff. Hurt people hurt people, as Pastor J.P. Dorsey always yep. liked to say. Like, but God doesn't. God's not going to hurt you, right? He might have some harsh things to tell you because he wants to help you change and be better and, and be closer to him and be more like him. But God's not going to just leave you up and dry. He's with you always. He is, he's Emmanuel, God with us. He's not going to give us anything we can't handle. Right, yeah. Well, through him, with him, without of course. Him. With, without with, him, yes. yeah. He's any, we can handle anything with him um, on our own. He's not, he's not, not, not going to give you a uh, task and be like, all right, See it. Right, come yeah. back, come not, back when you accomplish right. it. He's not going to be a teacher where he's just like, here's the homework, go home, do it, bring it back, yeah. right? Like, he's going to sit down and walk you through it, right? And, like, I love the old um, the old uh, poem where, like, you look back and you say, God, where – you only see, like, one set of footprints. And you say, God, where were you? And he goes, those are mine. I was carrying you the entire time. Yeah. And God doesn't say that to be, like, prideful, right? He says that because he's trying to remind you, I love you. I will carry you through this. I will bear your burdens. I just need you to trust me and continue to take one step after the other. Yeah. Like, like I think sometimes, I know for me, I'll get caught up into this. Where, like, like right now I'm looking for a house and stuff like that. And I get caught up in the fact of, I don't have the house right now. Oh, my gosh. You know, like, I haven't even been, what the heck is going to happen? I, like, I don't have the money yet, like. I can't buy a house straight up for cash. Like, I don't have that money, right? And I talk to my parents, and my parents just remind me, what is the one step you can do? Okay, I can get pre-approved. Okay, take that one step then. Yep. Because we, you don't need to take any more than that because that's what God's calling you to right now is to take that one step. 
And I think that's what we're trying to get at is as Christians, don't think about the, oh my gosh, I've saved or I've brought this many people to Christ, right? And not that that's a bad thing that you can't look at that and be, and, and be you know, happy be about happy that, and, right? And rejoice in and that. And rejoice in that. But what we're saying is, is don't look at that and say, well, because I haven't had a major influence yet, doesn't mean that you won't. It means that maybe you need to turn up your dial a little bit more, like a hearing aid, you need to turn it up a little bit more to hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit say, hey, take this one step and this one and then take the next. Don't worry too much about the future. You can still have plans and goals and hopes and dreams, but take this next step. Like for me, I want to be a counselor. Now I can get dragged up in the fact that I'm not a counselor yet. Or I can not worry about that, leave that there as a, as a vision, as a dream, and then say, okay, God, what's the next step? I got to get into a master's program. All right, I better start applying to master's programs. Let me do that. That's my one step. Yep. And so that's the big thing is like as anointed people, what's your one step to getting closer to ministering to people and, and bringing people to be anointed in Christ? And, for, and then learning to teach them to do the same thing that you've had to do. Right. It's it's this, you know, it's this clear telephone line of one step after the other, trusting in the Holy Spirit, listening to the Holy Spirit's voice, failing. Right. Like my mom sent me this one time and I love this. And I guess we'll leave you guys with this is God has already made God's already made his plans. Right. Every plan that God has made in your life, he has already pre-planned for you to be stupid. He's already planned for your stupidity to be involved. Yep. He, he's not concerned about the mistakes that you're going to make or where you're going to screw up or where you're going to hurt people. As long as you're willing to come back, admit it, and then continue to seek God and say, all right, God, what can I do? Because God's greater. Like like a line, and again, I guess I end up with this. Like the line in, in the movie where uh, Pastor Chuck's wife is talking to him after Lonnie had left, and he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. They're waiting for Lonnie. And she just looks at him and goes, do you think that you're that great to mess up God's plans? Yeah. No. <laughs> Can't be honest. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. None of us are great enough to ruin God's plans as long as we are willing to come back, seek him, and go, okay, where's the next step, God? I screwed up, but your grace is more than sufficient. Your mercies are beyond anything else in this world. They're infinite. Okay, what's the next step that I can take? Knowing that you do not look at me towards my failures, you look at me as how Christ looked, as an anointed one with Christ. And so, yeah, I guess that's, I don't know, do you have anything else to add? I, I don't. Um, no, I don't have anything else to add. All righty. I really enjoyed this. This was fun. Yeah, this was this was fun. This was a good one. Yeah. They're all good. They're all good, but I really like this one. I, yeah. I like all of them. I like all of them, but this one was needed. Yeah. They, so. They're all needed, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, we're actually about out of time here, so we're going to yeah. wrap it up with that. Thank you guys for listening, and yeah. uh, we'll catch you on the on the flip side.